excited to welcome Macy Blake back to the podcast. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's really fun to see you again. I have missed you. I haven't seen you in quite a while. It has been a while, and, and we're excited to have you here to talk about a big finale you've got coming up. I am so excited. This has been my passion project for the past year and a half. It's called The Chosen One series, and book five, the final book, is called Stop at Nothing, and it will be out on February 4th, so about a week. So we're, we're getting close. Yeah, we're going to have that exciting pre-order in the show notes so that people can go grab it and be ready for it to drop into their Kindle that day. And with an all new look for um, readers who have it, who aren't in my Facebook group, I have rebranded the entire series for the finale. So I'm revealing a whole new set of covers that will be launching for all of the books in the series. So I'm very excited for the everyone to get to see the new look and the new Sawyer, who's the main character. He's it's It's very cool. So... And those covers looked so good to begin with. That you know, it's really funny. You know, we've, you know, I'm like my quirky little self, but I just was ready for something new, and I found this like concept that I was really excited about, and I was sort of toying with it, maybe for the idea for a box set or you know something like that. Maybe once the series was complete, and then my cover artist, who has been my one of my closest friends for almost twenty years, she said you know, I have this idea for the final book. What do you think if, and it was the same idea. So I knew it was meant to be. So I was super excited and I, I just let her go with it. And, and it is so beautiful. I'm very excited for it. For people who don't know, tell us about the Chosen One series and what we're leading up to here in the finale. Well, that's actually a really difficult question to answer because it's crazy spoilers. And for anybody who is not familiar with me, I loathe spoilers. Like it's my least favorite thing. I don't want to be spoiled. I don't want to spoil anyone. I, but I do quite enjoy taunting my readers and teasing them quite, quite horribly. They call me the, the queen of edging. I don't like to tease everybody so much. But what I can tell you is that it is a poly romance where a human finds out about the supernatural world and come to find out he has eight mates and they're all paranormal creatures. And he has a special role to play that there is a prophecy for the chosen one who is my main character Sawyer. And he has to restore the balance of magic in the magical world. So the magic is broken and nobody knows why, but they've been waiting for this prophecy for this chosen one and his guardians to be revealed and now is the time and Sawyer has arrived. So he's been through this journey now for the first four books of finding his mates and his guardians and getting all of the pieces in place and finding out the secrets in his past and, and his what really is going on. And now we're at the finale where it's do or die. He either has to fix it or he's going to lose everything. So I wonder which way it'll go. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Having a romance at its core, I have an idea where it's going to go, but you know, you could. You, you know, could... I do believe in happily ever after. So, you know, I don't think anybody has too much to be afraid of, <laughs> except for my best friend, Amy, because I've already promised her that I'm going to kill a character for her. So, you know, hopefully it won't be anyone else's favorite character, but somebody has to die just so I can torment my best friend. So, <laughs> And if that person is your favorite character, listeners out there, just get in touch with Amy. Yeah, I know. You guys can commiserate. It's, it's all her fault. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a great time writing these books because we've talked about it on and off since you yeah. started them. Yeah. What is it about these that makes you so happy with them? I think because it's been a passion project that was building for a number of years. A lot of times I'll get an idea and I write the book and then I publish the book. And then it's moving on to the next book and you have the idea and you put, and it's almost like this, you're just churning out the idea and there, you don't really get enough time to savor it. This series has been something that I had the idea for it many years ago and I started gathering ideas and I was doing all of this research. The, I had it all sort of plotted out, but it wasn't quite right. And I just kept working on it and I kept building it. And whenever I was having trouble with the book that I was working on at the time, I would go open that notebook and I would start making notes and I would take things apart. So it's something that built all of the research and the world building 
had been years in the making. And so I had this incredible foundation of research and character ideas and plot points and that all right there ready. And I can't tell you how freeing that has been just to have these ideas. And I can flip through that notebook if I'm at a point where I'm like, I'm stuck for an idea. I don't know what to do in this spot. And I can flip through my notebook and I'm like, oh, I forgot that I had this idea three years ago. And, you know, (laughs) so it's made it a lot of fun to be able to like just put all of those pieces together. And I've never had a series like that before in a world like that before where I was just able to keep building it because I had been working on it for so long, just as sort of a passion project that I honestly never thought I would write it. And then one day I was like, the the idea came to me and I was like, that's the answer. And it was that there were all of the guardians were Sawyer's mates. That was the actual point. And I was like, can I do that? That's a whole lot of arms and legs to keep up with. But I just, I knew it was the right answer and I knew it was worth the, the risk to try it. And so I started trying to write it and it just, I wrote 40,000 words of the first book in the week. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew, I knew, <laughs> I knew that it was right. And so, and it, and it's just kept, it's just kept going. I just love to dive into the world. And you now the editing is, is less fun keeping up with all those arms and legs, mm. but it's a whole lot of fun for the creative process. How is the series changed for you since you first started figuring all this out now to where you're closing out book five? Did it end where you thought it would end or did it just keep yeah, more being and evolving? The the the, I've known the end since the beginning. I knew what was going to happen and how it was going to happen. Um, I have been very much surprised by some of the things that have happened on the journey that I did not know. There's been a couple characters that snuck up on me. Uh, for example, in the Hellhound series, Nick, who is Sawyer's older brother, I was not expecting him to be such a dynamic character. He was just going to be this sort of placeholder character that like filled this role that I needed, Sawyer needed and a big brother character for, you know, as the story went. And I wasn't expecting for Nick to then have his own book. And so give him hell is actually Nick's love story. And I wasn't expecting that to happen. So it's, it's pretty crazy that it's that things like that have surprised me, but the actual plot of the chosen books I've known from the beginning. That's cool. Are you, I can't remember and I should, cause we've talked about this. Are you a plotter or a pantser? Or in the yes, middle? I'm in the middle. I plot usually major plot points, but I don't, I don't go like, I don't outline. I don't go like chapter by chapter. I do sometimes once I'm really in the book, um, in the midst of it, I'll, I'll outline a little bit more, but pretty much I like to see what's going to happen. And almost always there's chapters that I want or things that happened in the book that I wasn't planning. So mm-hmm. pretty heavily pantser, to be honest with you. And yet I've known a five book series since I started writing it. I knew how it ended. So plotter and pantser, I, I don't know both. You're sitting right there in the middle somewhere for sure. <laughs> I know. I really am. Like I do a lot of planning, but I don't actually outline. So I like fall somewhere in the middle, I think. What is it about these books do you think that's resonated so much with readers? Because these have been quite successful. I, you know, I think that it's, it's a kind of that tale as old as time sort of thing where it's the human who finds out about the paranormal world and has this grand adventure and, you know, there's really everything that you could think of would be in there. I've got dragons. I've got vampires. I've got, you know, wolf shifters. I have lion shifters. I have hellhounds. I have dryads. The fae are in there. Pretty much I've used world mythology and pulled in pieces from, you know, all the mythology that I've studied over the years and that, that pepper it in there. And I think that a lot of the humor resonates because Sawyer is just – He's kind of goofy and he, he's just silly. And he's like, when he finds out that there are dragon, that his best friend is a dragon, he's like, you know, he wants him to light his marshmallow on fire so he can make a s'more. Like, this, <laughs> these kind of, you know. And I think that readers really appreciate that. I think that they, they appreciate that humor because a lot of them would, would say, oh, yep, yeah, I can, I get that. <laughs> I get that. That's a good idea, you know? So I think the humor and I think that the, 
the sort of idea that it's all fantastic and just finding out the mystery. I think a lot of the readers have just been like on the edge of their seat trying to figure out the the, the puzzle and, and try to figure out the, the secrets. So I've been yelled at quite a number of times <laughs> for some of the the, the things that I've, I've done to my poor characters, but it's fun. You mentioned that the Hellhound series actually connects to this world. Mm. How did that whole thing spin off with Hellhound Champions? It was, again, it was one of those things I was developing once I decided that Sawyer was going to have eight mates. I was working on that idea. And in the meantime, I was like, this is going to be a big universe. And I thought I wanted to write a Hellhound book because I, the only Hellhounds that I had ever seen were from Supernatural, the TV show, mm -hmm. and they were scary creatures. And I was mm -hmm. like, what, what are those sexy creatures? So I just thought it would be fun. And I thought, I'm going to write some Hellhounds for fun. And then it'll be great. That's what I'm going to do. Right? That, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be fine. So I did that, and then it ended up being part of the universe. And I was like, well, but Sawyer needs a character who can do this. And I happen to have these Hellhounds who can do this. And so I ended up writing... At the same time, I was writing Chosen, the first book, so All or Nothing. I realized while I was writing that that I had another story in my vault of story ideas where I had one of the main characters' name was Henry. And that story had stalled, and I had never been able to finish it. So Henry ended up being the main character of Chosen, and he was one of the children in Sweet Nothings, which is the prequel to Chosen. And he had a powerful uncle in the book who was able to protect him. And that uncle became Meshach the Hellhound. All over the course of like three weeks of trying to fit a bunch of the different ideas that I had. So it, it, it was like it was all meant to be all of those things that I had started building and were was cooking in the background of my mind. It was like, oh, it's all the same universe. Okay, that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> and Hellhound is now a three-book series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you did co-write. Uh -huh. I did, yes. Casey and I have been basically writing buddies since I first wrote my very first book. And we were, we were when I wrote Mind Magic, she was writing her first book. under She was writing under a different name at the time. And so we have, we've been together for years. Just we'll pop online. How many words did you get today? Oh, can you read this scene for me? I can't, you know, and so it was really fun. And when, and Nick, Nick's book is the one and that character spoke to her and I was talking about writing his book and she was like, oh, I think this might be fun. Can, can we do it? You know? And, and I was like, it was the first time in several years that she had really been excited about writing. She worked full time. And wasn't didn't really have as much time to write. And so I was like, let's do it together. So it was a lot of fun being able to write a book with one of my oldest friends, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. She's actually going to be um, launching a spinoff series to the universe, but she's put her own spin on it. So we'll let you, we'll keep you guys posted for when that's going to be coming out, probably at some point this year. Look at you creating a universe that other people get to play in. That's, I know. That's incredible yeah. in and of itself. But only if you're one of my oldest friends. Nobody else is going to get that. Nobody else gets this. <laughs> is there more to come in Hellhound at this point? I haven't decided. That That's the trick question. I do have loose plans for a fourth Hellhounds book. But what I'm, t what I'm kind of torn over is that I want to use those characters in other books and other series in the universe. So I right now I'm debating whether or not to put out a fourth Hellhound book or to put the Hellhounds as main characters in one of the other spinoff series that I'm creating in the universe. There will be more Hellhounds and there will be more Hellhound love stories. I'm just not sure that it will be under the Hellhound series umbrella. Does that make sense? It does. Watch that explanation. It sounded very complicated. You, and you mentioned more spinoffs for Chosen One. Do you, yeah. What can you tease us out about that, perhaps? Well, I have currently four new series started in the universe. I have plans to release two of them in 2020. 
for those of you who have read the Hellhounds books, I have mentioned Nick multiple times. He's been such a dynamic character and a fan favorite. So, spoiler alert, Nick ends up being the guardian of a number of children. I'll be very vague so that I'm not too spoilery. But I thought that it would be a fun twist for there to be a little magical mayhem involved in those children finding their forever homes. And so the series is called Magical Mates, and there is some magical intervention involved to get these children and their parent there to help them find their parents, but to help their parents find each other as well. So those I have two novellas that will be coming out in the spring to start that universe and just to see. I want to kind of see if people are interested in it. I think it's it's fun, but, you know, I want to see what my readers think about it. And then the big series for 2020 is going to be The Coven. So The Chosen Coven will be launching in May, I think. I'm not 100% sure when the first one is scheduled. I don't remember. But all four books in that series are planned for 2020. So that'll be my big 2020 push is getting those four done. So that'll be The Coven that has helped throughout the books. They are, they're going to each get their own series. So, um, yeah, they're on. I'm excited. I'm excited about it. I've already started working on them. So I'm like, I'm in the world of all the elementals and doing the elemental magic. And it's a lot of fun. So. Did you see from the start in that notebook that it, this was going to grow to be so many books in such an interlocked universe? Was that the hope or did it no, just No, it happen? wasn't the hope. It wasn't even like, honestly, it wasn't even what I wanted. Like I... I had this idea that I would just churn out these these sort of similar series, but with different sort of creatures. And so that I could say, okay, well, the mythology of the Fae is so unique. How would a, a group of Fae be different from a pack of werewolves? I love that sort of differences. And then to think, oh, well, what would happen if you paired a werewolf with a Fae? What would that what would that look like? And so a lot of my research that I did was really just like pulling in those pieces of, well, what what about this? And what's unique? And what's something that I haven't seen before? But then what are those tried and true tropes that I really love? And like all my werewolves have to have to be this, you know, certain thing. Or I, And so I didn't think that it would be one giant universe. I thought that I would write about my werewolves and one of them might have a fae mate. And then I would write about the fae. And, you know, maybe it was the same group, like family of Fae or the same realm, but it wouldn't be really connected. Yeah, I know. That didn't happen. <laughs> At this point, like, there's so many characters and there's so many potential series that, you know, I already have my writing schedule through 2021 and it's in this universe. So as long as everybody keeps reading them, I'll keep writing them because I just have a lot of fun with it. That's really cool. And yeah, that your plan's fun. so far out because you've already mentioned like six books coming this year. Mm-hmm. So I assume you've got another four to six out there in 2021. Yeah, the, the ones for 2021 is another, it's a smaller pack that is a, a made family. I'll, I won't spoil it too much, but once you've read Stop at Nothing, you'll, you'll know who the made family is. But it's the family that you choose. And so that's going to be the the stories of a family that you choose. And they're going to be a little bit more of a, a adventure. You know, it'll be a little bit more, a little bit of suspense in those. So there's a little bit more, you know, danger in there. Well, not more danger because, you know, the, the chosen, there's plenty of danger in the chosen universe. But I think there's going to be a little bit more suspense to those, the way they're they're feeling right now. But, of course, I haven't started writing those yet. Not even <laughs> I'm that crazy to write that far out. <laughs> And of course, there's always going to be a good HEA thrown in there too. Oh yes, always, always, always. Got to have your happily ever afters. And I think that's what's fun about this universe is when you have favorite characters, you never know where they're going to turn up. And so even there, there's a character in the Hellhounds books that everyone really liked. And over the course of the series, I was able to give him his happily ever after. And he makes an appearance in one of the magical mates books with his wife and you know it's like you still get to see those characters and you get to see their journeys 
because they're still part of the world. It's so cool. It's, it's been so fun to do. And so when readers say, oh, I really miss this character, I'm like, well, I'll, I'll give him a little mention. Let's, let's check in on him. And so it's been fun to be able to do that and not have to say goodbye, you know. You've never had this long of a series slash universe before, but we see it happening all the time. I mean, obviously, Lucy Lennox has her massive mm -hmm. universe and yeah. Charlie Cochet has her big universe. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be a caretaker of that sizable chunk of, of material? It's overwhelming. I have a lot of help. I have... I actually killed the same character twice on accident. And so my oh. readers actually figured that out for me. I really didn't like that character. So I killed her twice. I fixed it. My readers actually caught it in, in the arc form. And they were like, but didn't you kill her already? And I was like, I sure did. So it is a lot to keep up with. And, but I have a, a big support system in place to help me keep it all together. And I have a fantastic editing team who helps me keep track. Because it's really hard when you're dealing with this many characters, like, you know, just keeping their eye color straight. It just seems like so silly, but like that, I probably have 150 characters in this universe at this point, just from all, even the little side characters, you know, that, that get barely a mention, but it's, I have to remember them because they're going to show up at some point, you know? So it, it's, it's a lot, but it, I, I'm loving it. It's, it's the kind of, I think it's the kind of books that I like to read. You know, I was mentioning to somebody recently, Carol Lynn, her Cattle Valley series. It's this great series about a small town and you can just go back and pop in and then you're back in the town and you're back with those characters. And, you know, you're these guys, these guys are going to go out to dinner at the local restaurant and they're going to be sitting at the table next to the characters from three books ago that you fell in love with. And there was something so inspiring about that. I don't remember how many books that series has in it, but. It's a whole bunch of books. It's in the 20s, possibly into the 30s. It's a huge series. And I just love that. And, and I love being able to see those characters that, you know, you saw five or six books ago. And now you get a mention of them and you get to see that they're still happy. And there's something really special about that. And it's exciting. You put out another set of books last year, The Triad of Magic. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about those books. So it was really fun because these were actually the first books that I ever wrote. It what started as pretty much a dare um, of sorts. A friend of mine. I, I know, right? <laughs> a friend of mine and I read Paranormal Romance together, and we were always talking about the books that we were reading. And he said he and his partner were raising a child, and he said, "I wonder what it would be like to have." A shifter kid like what would a shifter kid be like and I was like I could write that and his birthday was coming up so I wrote this little thing for him and I didn't think anything of it and turns out that you know he really liked it and he was like you know you should get this book published and I was like oh thanks you're sweet I just I'm glad you liked it but he kept on at me and so I, I had them published they first came out um 2012 and 13. I think the first book, first book was 2012. And then the, the final book, I believe was out in 2013, possibly early 2014. And that was the end of it. And then middle of last year, I ended up getting the rights back for those books. And I was like, well, what am I going to do with them? Because they were, there's the, like my first book. They're like my babies. I got to do something. And I had one of my Macy readers who happened to know both of my pen names and she was like, you should just put them out as Macy because your readers are going to love them. And I was like, can I do that? Is that weird? I talked to my readers about it and they were like, no, give us the books. Like, stop. Like, so I did. I published my books under the first pen name that I, that I published under. I republished them as Macy and that's the Triad of Magic. And it's been so fun for those books that were like, like when you, you know, if, when you ask somebody what their favorite book is that they've written, you know? it's sort of like that first book always has a really special place in your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's that world for me, the, the mind magic. And that was my first attempt at, at this type of a universe. So it's kind of funny to see now how far I've come in that, you know, nine years that it was really special to see that one, that those books still resonated and two to see that, yeah, now I'm writing this even bigger universe and it's just fun. You know, it's fun to see how you, 
get where you at, where you're at. And that was a great opportunity for me to be able to experience that with my readers. Do you think you'll visit that series again or well, cross them I into your new that. series? <laughs> I, I've sort of teased that I would try to figure out a way to like loop it into the chosen universe because everything seems to come back to that. But I don't think I am. I I really did a lot of soul searching about it and I thought about adding another story to the end. But I like them the way they are. They're special the way they are. And I don't want to touch that. That was those were my first babies and I'm proud of them the way they are. And I, I, I want to leave that as I originally created it and not try to tinker with it. I, mm-hmm. I, I think that it's best the way I had originally intended. And, you know, I've got a lot to keep me busy. So I, I but I'm really tempted to write another one. But I, I just don't think my heart says to they they were special for what they are and what they were. And I need to leave that and, you know, leave it be. Okay. Yeah, I, I know. understand how that goes. Yeah. I've I, I thought about it quite a bit. So we've talked a lot about the future already. Is there anything else out there in the world of Macy Blake we should be teased about? There's always stuff to be teased about in the world of Macy Blake. I think for I like to give readers different experiences based on where they are with me. So if you are on my newsletter, you see things that you don't necessarily see if you follow me on Facebook and if you follow me on Facebook, you may not see things that are in my group. I try to give people different little short stories and deleted scenes, little shorts of characters that I don't have a full novel idea for, but that I I know I want to give a little happily ever after to. I have might possibly, possibly have a couple of those planned for this year. I also have a very, a very good, let's shall we say, <laughs> deleted scene that'll be coming up that'll be only for if you follow me on either my newsletter or my, my Facebook group. So, you know, there's a lot of like secrets in my world that I I love to give bonuses um, and teasers to people. The, my group has already seen the cover of the, the new series, the new launch, the, the rebranding. And they've also already seen several like scenes from the teaser scenes from the book. So, you know, that's I would say like that's the big thing for readers who aren't following me that you get the most up to date information and I do Q and A's over there. I'll I'll probably do a Q and A or a Facebook Live after the book launches so that I can answer questions and let people yell at me. Uh, <laughs> you know, all that death and destruction. Somebody's going to want to yell at me. That's the thing about this world is you really don't know what's going to happen next. So there was so much. It was actually it was one of my readers just reminded me it was actually only supposed to be four books. So nothing gained wasn't in the master plan. It was four books. And, but I apparently am very long winded and had a lot of characters. And so I ended up having to squeeze another book in. So nothing gained was, was a bonus that wasn't part of the plan. So nice. this universe, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, all this leads to the obvious question of where can people find you online so they can connect into all this good stuff? Yeah. Your absolute best place to find me is is in my Facebook group. I check in there usually once a day, if not <laughs> more than that. When I'm when I'm not writing, I check in multiple times. But when I'm writing, I I limit it. But that those are that my group is the the place where people get to see things first. I also send out newsletters only when I have news to report. So I send out when I have a new release or when something's on sale and and stuff like that. So. If you're a reader who only really wants to get like the news and you don't want to see all the memes and all the, you know, fun dragon pictures and everything that appear in my group, then that's where you're going to want to be. I did a poll this week. My my readers picked the name of my next character. So my next main character, I let them pick their, the name of the character. So that that's going to be fun. And then, you know, just regularly on Facebook, mostly. I am not on Twitter. Sad to say that I, I cannot keep up with Twitter. I'm you know, I am on Instagram as well. I, I try to post things when I'm traveling, plus some fun little snippets. I'm a, I love Harry Potter, and so I go to Universal and the Harry Potter world about once a month, and so I try to post some things from over there. So that, that's, you know. All the all usual. Over, yeah, except for Twitter, <laughs> not on Twitter. Everywhere else. <laughs> well, we will link up to that in the show notes page so people can – get on board to all of that and especially so they can, you know, join you in the Facebook group perhaps as the new book comes out. 
Yeah, that'll be that'll be the place to be because we do we do spoiler chats and I do Facebook lives and Q and A's and I really try to be present for my readers because I know how important it is to to have that you know connection and you know when you want to ask questions. You know, you want to know that your author is going to, well, I mean, I'm not always going to answer it. Don't get me wrong, well, but yeah. you know, I do like to tease and I do like to taunt. So if you like teasing and taunting, please feel free to come <laughs> to my group so that I can tease and taunt you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. awesome. Well, Macy, thank you so much for coming and sharing the yeah. finale news with us. I know there's so much big news coming. It's so exciting. And I can't wait for everybody to see, you know, Sawyer and, and his mates and, and how they, how they deal with the big finale. <laughs> <laughs>